In the early hours of the 15th of April, 1912, there was a man who plunged into the freezing waters of the Atlantic Ocean after the Titanic sinking. No, not that one. That one. Not a fictional character like Jack Dawson, but a real one that worked on the Titanic. Charles Jockin, the chief baker on the Titanic, here represented in James Cameron's film from 1997, has quite the story. Let's talk about it in this mini-sode of Unprecedented History. Charles Jockin was born on August 3, 1878, in Birkenhead, Cheshire, England. He was the son of a licensed vitla, which is basically an innkeeper. He had four siblings in total. Earliest records indicate he was a baker in 1900 and 1901 at the age of 22 serving aboard the RMS Majestic, and then to go on to serve on the RMS Teutonic. Both of his brothers were in the Royal Navy. His brother Theodore died aboard the RMS Cornwallis on 1st of March, 1915. He was buried at sea. Charles was married on February 11, 1907, to Louise Woodward. They had a son and a daughter. Charles was aboard the Titanic on her delivery trip from Belfast to Southampton. He was assigned to help stock the Titanic on this trip. He was offered a promotion while on board of Chief Baker and accepted the position. His monthly pay was £12, which, adjusted for inflation, is about $470. This made him one of the most highly paid sailors on board. He was in charge of a galley staff of 13, which consisted of 10 bakers, 2 confectioners, and 1 Vienna baker, who was responsible for much of the breakfast pastries on board. On the night of April 14th, Charles was off duty in his bunk. When the impact of the Titanic hitting the iceberg woke him up, Charles, hearing no official orders, took it upon himself to muster his staff for an emergency at the bakery on D-Deck. He instructed them to collect over 50 loaves of bread and other provisions and take them to the lifeboats. After this, Charles returned to his cabin for a drink. He then went up to the boat deck around 12.30 a.m. to board his assigned lifeboat, number 10. Once he arrived, he encountered Chief Officer Wilde shouting and conducting lifeboat boarding operations. Charles pointed out that there was no need to panic or rush the process. He assisted some staff in passing women and children into the lifeboat. The boat was only half full once this was complete, so Charles and a couple other crew members descended to aid deck to find more women and children to fill the lifeboat. Many of the women and children refused to board the lifeboats, fearing it was less safe than staying on board the Titanic. Charles and crew forcibly escorted multiple to the boat deck and into the lifeboat. Charles then returned to his cabin once again for another drink. He was supposed to board lifeboat 10, but remained on board. Water had already begun to pull on the floor in Charles' cabin at this point. From here, Charles assumed there was no lifeboats left, so he began throwing an estimated 50 deck chairs off the B-deck second-class promenade in a hope to have something to cling onto in the water. He then went to A-deck to the deck pantry and grabbed a glass of water. This is when Charles heard a loud twisting of metal echoing through the ship, which was actually the Titanic breaking in half. After this, Charles made his way to the poop deck. Here, he grasped hold of the railing at the very stern of the ship while the Titanic began its final plunge into the water. According to Charles, the ship did not reach the perpendicular angle shown in the movie. Also, at this point, Charles says he was basically alone on this part of the ship when it was sinking. He transferred all the items in one pocket to another and tightened his belt. Once in the water, Charles was not pulled down, also portrayed in the movie, and barely got his head wet. Being at sea for the majority of his life, Charles was considered a very strong swimmer. He would tread water for an estimated two to three hours until at daybreak, he witnessed an overturned collapsible boat B with about 20 to 25 men standing on top of it. A man named Isaac Mayard recognized Charles and pulled him slightly out of the water, but not entirely. Another lifeboat would show up shortly afterwards to take Charles aboard. Once he arrived at the one of the rescue ships, the Carpathia, he said he felt well apart from swollen feet. Usually, sudden immersion into freezing water that night would have caused death from cardiac arrest or hypothermia within 15 to 30 minutes. Most science would argue that alcohol would lessen your chance of survival and speed up hypothermia, but Charles Jockin defied all odds on that night to remember. After recovering from the disaster, Charles returned to his family in England before moving to New Jersey in the U.S. permanently. He would continue to serve on ships through World War II, even serving on another ship that would sink in 1941, the U.S. freighter SS Oregon. Charles would pass away on December 9, 1956, after serving over 50 years aboard various British and U.S. ships. He would be portrayed in two major films about the sinking of the Titanic, both showing him inebriated, although Charles himself said that night he was fully aware and not intoxicated. One thing is for sure though, his actions and survival story did not go unrecognized. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and consider subscribing for more videos in the near future.